Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be providing a basic overview of the new Text Mesh Pro Text Utilities class, which will be available in the next release of Text Mesh Pro. Now, this new utility class will essentially enable you to track or interact with characters, words, links, or lines contained within a Text Mesh Pro text object. Now, before diving into this utility class to explain some of its functionality, I'd like to go over some basic information. Uh, in Text Mesh Pro that makes this possible. Now, for this, I loaded a new scene called Link Example, and I'm going to select my Text Mesh Pro object, and we're going to take a look at this uh, small utility script here called Text Info Debug Tool, which is available in the Text Mesh Pro user forum. And once the new release of Text Mesh Pro is out, there's going to be an updated version of this Text Info Debug Tool. So let's take a look at it. So this text info class contains a bunch of substructures which are actually arrays um, and one of them is called character info and it's an array that contains information about every single character contained in the text object. Now I use this text info debug tool to help me visualize and test the information or the data contained in the text info class. So if we look at the character info, it contains information about every single character and the location of each of the four corners of it, the baseline, the sender, the sender. It contains information about its style, whether for example it's bold, italic, uh, uh, underline and so on and so forth, information about its color, and um, in the case of the visualization here, uh, yellow represents a character and gray is basically a character like space or line feed or a tab, for example. Now, another piece of information contained in the text info class is word info. It's another array that contains information about every single word contained in the text object. And here we can see green rectangles drawn around each of the words. Now, the word info contains an index to the first character, last character, as well as how many characters are contained in this word. Okay. Uh, next, link info is very similar. It, it's an array that contains the different links contained in there, an index to the first character, last character, how many characters are there, as well as a hash code that allows us to get a reference to this uh, link so you can call them by ID. So the tag, if I highlight it here in the text input box, basically link equal in quote ID underscore zero one. There's a hash code generated for that which allows you when you're going to interact with it to know which one you're actually clicking on. Um, the next thing, it's a minor detail that's important. If I was to change the size of the rec transform, you can see that this link is actually pretty long. Um, so the text utility class as well as this text info debug tool will actually track the link and actually generate a different region or hitboxes for this link even if it spans on multiple lines like right now it's on two separate lines okay so but this is all handled automatically then another example is we've got here this lines and it shows us information about each of the lines as well as the blue line is where the baseline is located. Okay, so that's uh, at text info also contains information uh, like text info dot character count, line count, word count, space count, whatever. So there's additional information in there as well. Um, now, this text info debug tool is not only useful for me to visualize what's contained. Uh, in the text info class, but it can also, taking a look at the script is also can be useful for you to learn how to access this information as well. So let's go back to the other example and enter play mode. So uh, let me select the text object. So I've got here a text mesh pro word highlighter. Uh, it's wrong name now for the script, but it's the one that contains the functionality that allows me to interact with the text object. So if I enter play mode, you're going to see that we have you know all of our text and now if I mouse over a word you can see that it's uh, just tinting the text to illustrate that we're over a word if I mouse over a link instead of just tinting it uh, brings up this other text object and gives us the ID of the link that I'm actually selecting so this is link ID 01 and this is link ID 02. Uh, 
Um, if I click on the various characters, I'm actually changing the vertex color and assigning a random color to them. Now on my camera, I've got this little script that allows me to zoom in and zoom out as well as pan around. So what I'm going to do is just zoom in and click some of the characters just for fun and zoom out change the angle of the view just to show that this works in any perspective view and if I even flip upside down any angle see the link info still pops up let me click on the O back there and all the different letters so this tracking works in any uh, view uh, it works with any of the canvas so whether the canvas uh, render mode is in world space, screen space overlay, or screen space camera, it works with that as well. So now let's go take a look at, at how this functions and take a look at this Text Mesh Pro text utility class. Let's open up Visual Studio to take a look at this Text Mesh Pro text info class. So the first function we're going to look at is the find intersecting character which as you can see takes a reference to a text mesh pro UGUI object it uh, requires a position which typically would be the position of our mouse cursor or uh, a touch for example a reference to the camera now if your uh, canvas is in render mode uh, screen space overlay then you can pass an all for the camera and then we have a boolean saying you know show us only worry about visible characters or actually worry about characters like space and so on and so forth now this function will return an index to whatever character uh, this position intersects with if there is no intersection it returns a negative one if there is one it returns the index of the character that would be found in the text info dot character info array um, there are several functions uh, find intersecting character using the UGUI uh, or the new UI text mesh pro component there's one for the normal text mesh pro component you have find nearest character so instead of uh, having the cursor be contained within the rectangle of the character it will find the nearest character uh, we have intersecting word nearest word intersecting link nearest link and so on and so forth so the utility class is pretty straightforward it contains a bunch of functions that return an index to whatever the position is either nearest to or intersecting with now the logic of what I showed you is actually implemented in this text mesh pro uh, word highlighter text and let's take a look at it and I'm gonna go to a simple part of it right now I'm using uh, the event system in unity and I'm basically using their eye pointer uh, interface handler and exit enter click and so on and so forth so I basically here have a uh, delegate where a function where we're responding to on pointer click in this case I'm using the I will highlight this because I realize my cursor uh, doesn't show up very well so the only thing that really matters is we're using this text utilities class we're finding the intersecting character and we're getting an index out of it now if it's negative one then you know we don't have a match if it's something else then we have a match when I'm saying this is the only part that's important the rest of the code here has to do with what am I going to do if I have a match or an intersection now in this case I'm actually getting a reference to the vertex index inside of the geometry uh, so the text info class uh, does give me access to the mesh info so all I care is whatever character I just intersected with what vertex index is it so I can go and change the colors or the vertex colors of that character but your own implementation you could be spawning a new object over that character you could be doing all kinds of things these are just examples of things you could do you'll have to implement your own uh, function to do whatever you want to do if you are hovering over a word or a link and so on and so forth so let's go look at how I implemented uh, my own word highlighting and so on and so forth so uh, let me go back to unity and enter play mode so we can see what we're doing so here one of the things I was doing is if we have a match with a word I'm tinting the word right so let's stop this and go back to our script 
and this is where uh, this functionality is implemented. So I'm going to query, I'm going to use the text utilities class to figure out, hey, are we intersecting with a word? And if we are, here's extra logic here, if we are intersecting with one um, and we had one selected before, then unhighlight or, or remove the tint that we had put on the previous word, right? So this logic here deals with untint the previous word that we were tinting. Then over here, we're dealing with um, if the index is not negative one, meaning if we do have a word that's intersecting with the cursor in this case, uh, get the word info for that word based on the index, then get me the UI vertices. Let's look up what the first index of that word is so I can go tint it and I'm going to iterate through every single character. Uh, so starting at the first index, based on how many characters that word contains, I'm going to go change the colors and tint them by a certain amount and then push the modified vertex colors and geometry back into the UI vertices uh, through the canvas using the set vertices. And essentially that's the logic. In terms of the link, uh, it's a little bit different. So we're going to see, hey, are we intersecting with a link? And actually, when I'm saying it's a little bit different, let's look at it again. So if I hover over a link, we can see that this, you know, other text object pops up with the link, right? And all I'm doing is enabling and disabling this object. So let's stop this, go back to Visual Studio. So in Awake, which I kind of hid, in Awake, I'm basically instantiating a prefab that contains a text mesh pro object and a sprite for the backing, the blue texture that we saw, and then I set it to false, right? And I actually parent it to the canvas. Then here we are checking for a link. And if we match a link, then hey, did we have one pre-selected before? And if there was one selected before, just set it to inactive. Then if the link, we do have a match, then we're going to look at our, we're going to retrieve the link info so we can look up basically in this case what the hash code is and the hash code for ID1. And here, by the way, I put this little debug uh, line here, but you can use the text mesh pro text utility, get simple hash code based on a string and it will return what that hash code is. So here I already did that. So I know this is the hash code. Uh, 291445 is the hash code for ID uh, underscore 01. So basically, if the hash code is the 01, then we're going to position our uh, text pop-up object at that position of the cursor. We're going to set it active, and I'm going to change the text to ID1. You know, whatever the, the constant string that I declared, which is over here, you have selected link with a color, and we're basically doing that here. Right, so uh, this is pretty straightforward in terms of how it's doing its things. So let me go back to Unity here, enter play mode again. So this is basically it for the video. So all I'm showing is this new uh, text uh, utilities class that will allow you to interact with characters, words, or links. Uh, contained in a text object and you're going to be using this utilities class to detect uh, these different intersection or if a cursor is near or a touch is near something and then uh, it's going to be up to you to choose how you're going to implement you know what happens when you intersect with those various elements so hopefully you enjoyed the video if you have any questions suggestions comments please feel free to post on the text mesh pro user forum and thank you for watching.